There is only one way to see the world and it's through your windscreen. Road trips give you just so much more. And with the holiday season upon us, we decided to hit the road too. I'm just checking our itinerary which looks really really interesting. We're beginning in Durban following in the footsteps of the great Mahatma Gandhi who came here in 1893 and spent 21 years here. This is where he actually became Mahatma Gandhi fighting for the rights of Indians. Well, ours is more about a road trip and we're going to get going on this incredible journey and take you along with us. Durban is the largest city in the KwaZulu-Natal province and it's a hustling, bustling place. The Golden Mile, a popular beachfront promenade was bristling with activity and locals selling their colourful wares. Tushaka, which is the more upmarket end of this promenade, had an entire shopping area and some weird wildlife attractions for those who like to be grossed out. More interesting though is the old shipwreck that's been brought ashore to become a restaurant. And further down is a boardwalk which provides a spectacular view of the city and the Moses Mabidea Stadium, a very popular football and cricketing ground. Leaving Yushaka, we headed down Mahatma Gandhi Road and I felt a sense of pride in seeing that name atop a street sign in a foreign land. Treading the traffic, I was happy to be back in the comfy cool zone of our C-Class with the temperature soaring outside. Durban can get really hot and the traffic quite chaotic. Thankfully, the C-Class was cutting easily through the heavily congested sections of road, getting us in and out of narrow traffic gaps to the crowded Spice Market. The Spice Market felt like any Indian bazaar area and with so many Indians around, it truly felt like home. Durban is home to the largest Indian diaspora and it's also the most culturally diverse city in the Rainbow Nation. <laughs> Back in our cool car, we cruised down to the Moses Mabidia Stadium and thank God we'd cool down because what came next tested my fitness levels to the utmost and kept me sweating in panic. I was already feeling very iffy getting kitted up and after signing the waiver, I was even more scared. Climbing those 352 steps, though the view was fabulous, my head was spinning and I was wondering what have I got myself into? Did I rush into the big rush? Standing on that platform minus a railing, clinging on for dear life, my knees were feeling weak. And then I took that leap of faith. The visuals just don't do justice to the feeling of plunging down towards the earth, hurtling towards the grass and just free falling. That's an adrenaline rush like I've never done before. Never ever. I'm overwhelmed. But it was great. Realization hit home as I'd done the big rush, the highest bungee swing in the world. Bucket list ticked for sure. I did it, I did it. Well, day one in South Africa has been absolutely exhilarating. And not because we jumped off one of the tallest, well, Guinness Book record setting swings in the world. But because it's, I think, one day and we've got to experience so many sights, sounds, smells, flavours and we wiped it all off and ended the day with this fabulous seafood meal, finger licking good. The next day we packed our mountains of luggage and equipment into the sea's boot and set off to Winterton. We hit the highway and I was immediately amazed with the quality of roads. Now whilst the C-Class felt nice and compact in the city yesterday, uh, whilst we were nipping in and out of those crowded streets, today out on the highway it's a good companion as well. Cruise is really easy, comfortable, it's keeping me cool though it's really hot outside. 
everything just happens effortlessly and that's the beauty about it you just arrive from destination to destination feeling all calm and composed don't feel like you've done a long journey the b road we took later was beautiful and soon enough we reached our first stop theater maritzburg This sleepy little station was at one point the center of activity and a place that is conjoined with our history. I can see there's a plaque here which was actually inaugurated by our Prime Minister Mr Narendra Modi on the 9th of July 2016. So this is very recent this display. Let's go inside the room and take a look. As you can see it's a quiet little station now not much activity over here It's this spot because it says in the vicinity of this plaque Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was evicted from a first class compartment on the night of 7th June 1893 now this was just a couple of days after he arrived in Durban and he was going to fight a court case so he was sent off to Pretoria and you know they've bought a first class ticket for him but unfortunately he wasn't allowed to travel and this is the incident that really changed the course of his life he took up the fight against racial oppression and we've seen the results of that big piece of our history here with the morning progressing fast the urge to munch got stronger and we snacked on the local goodies so when in africa do as the africans do what i'm snacking on today because i'm feeling a little peckish now it's been a long drive since the morning is this it's looks kind of awful but it tastes really nice it's dried meat and it's really flavorful back out on the highway the c class was keeping pace nicely well today driving to the drakensberg mountains we have a lovely day it's a nice sunny day blue skies and You know the highway very often has you know points where you can see the road stretch out endlessly in front of you and you get this nice 180 degree panoramic view around and it's quite beautiful. And the 180 kilometers from Pieter Maritzburg to Winterton flew by. Winterton is nestled in the mountain of dragons or Drakensberg mountains where our second adventure awaited us. Well it seems to be an adventure a day here in South Africa it's just our second day and already another adventure the adventure for today well i'm going to be like jay and swing from tree to tree across rivers jungle everything but as you can see i'm much better catered out than she ever was in the quest for tarzan we were swinging from one tree to another high off the ground in the thick of a jungle from mountainside to mountainside Zip lining over gorges requires a certain amount of skill and paying attention to the instructor's calls as our cameraman Neeraj soon learned. You do need to master the art of ABS and OBS. Nope, we're not talking about the conventional terms we know, but zip lining terminology. ABS is adventure braking system where the guide slows us down and OBS is your own braking system which means using your own hands to slow down. <laughs> It's all about technique and once you get the hang of it it is a joy ride. On the mini cooper I have the ABS at the end of the adventure braking system. Our guides also got us into auto car mode calling the various lines across by names like mini cooper for the small but fast one and black ferrari for the fastest one across the gorge which was my absolute favorite. Truly feeling like Jane of the Jungle now what I've swung across is 65 meters above What is the ground way down there and 120 meters across this gorge a full on adrenaline rush and if you dare to look down and around the views are just stunning Another delightful day ended with a cozy dinner in the Drakensberg Sun Hotel a small but beautiful little lodge However, dinner hadn't given us a true picture of the place and we awoke to stunning views from our room the next morning. Breakfast in the patio was also a lovely setting. Well, 
I have a cat to share my breakfast with today. And it's going to be hard to leave this place, Winterton, because it's just so gorgeous, so beautiful out here in this hotel. The Drakensberg Sun has this fabulous view. There's so many activities to do around here as well. But we've got a road trip, we've got kilometers to cover, and we have to keep going. Today we're headed to Kruger Park. It's 600 kilometers out on the road, so it's time to get going. Driving out of Winterton to Hazy View, we caught the Sunday churchgoers and the kids out on the road just enjoying the weekend. Now, after all the frenetic activity of the last two days, where we climbed 352 steps to jump off the top of the stadium, and then yesterday swinging from treetop to treetop and then climbing halfway up a hill again, my legs are just so frazzled. So it's nice on these long, straight highways to be able to settle into cruise control and just give my legs a bit of a break. Soon we were winding our way through the hills which proved to be a bit of a playground with the reasonably high speed limits letting us enjoy the road. C-Class did a good job of entertaining me down that section of road using the paddle shifts. There was a nice heft to the steering. So I quite enjoyed myself and then after that we've gotten out onto these very flat, straight sections of road. Cutting through the sugarcane fields, the fuel needle was dipping gently with the sea sipping fuel. But we still stopped for a quick refuel in the town of Newcastle and then headed off towards Ladysmith. This is the area where the Afrikaners and Zulus went to war in what was the Blood River Battle. There's a long and interesting history worth reading. And when you are doing long distances, especially for someone like me as a woman, going to the loo is not always easy. But here, even the loos at gas stations have been impeccably clean. By lunchtime, we hit the town of Ermelo and we did an African version of KFC called Nando's. After lunch, the fields and undulating roads continued until we got to Nels Creek, which is when it turned again into pine trees and winding sections. With the sun setting behind us, it made for an even more outstanding drive. Very often I can see the road five kilometers ahead, so it's easy driving and the speed limit's been about 120 kilometers. And even on a single lane highway, the road is just so well surfaced. Long distance driving in South Africa is really easy. We've passed through a diverse range of roads today. Hills, flat grasslands, back into the hills through plantations, through really small cities where you can see the difference between a big city like Durban and the different kinds of people, the different kind of culture. So it's been nice. I mean, there's no better way to see the world than driving by road, I think. As darkness fell, we arrived in Hazy View and settled in to an early night with a 4.30 a.m. wake-up call for the next day. We're in Hazy View this morning and as you can see, it's still dark outside. It's an early morning call today because we're off to see the animals at Kruger National Park. Hazy View is actually the gateway to Kruger National Park and it's about a 20 minute drive to the park from here. And we're off on a safari. Kruger was the first wildlife sanctuary ever in South Africa and was founded in 1926. It stretches across a massive 2,000 hectares. I've got some few rules and regulations. We couldn't contain our excitement and as soon as the permits were done, we set off on our safari. And we got lucky in the first 10 minutes with the sighting of a female leopard. Yeah, turn around. Look at us. There was much excitement and cameras clicking and loud whispers which made the shy lady dive into the bushes so quick that we barely got a glimpse. But yes, we had seen one of the big five. It's really difficult to describe in words the thrill and beauty of just seeing animals in their natural habitat. And it's better to let the visuals speak for themselves. 
Zebras, impalas, water buffaloes and warthogs all preened for us and birds came out too. And down a dusty trail we got lucky enough to see wild dogs. Now that may not sound exciting but this is an endangered species that are highly elusive. So we got really lucky as they trotted alongside, stopping every now and then to check us out. A little more satisfied, we decided to break for breakfast where the yellow-billed hornbills kept us entertained. And tummies replete, we exited the breakfast area. Lo and behold, 500 meters down the road, we saw it. The big cat, hiding in the bushes, finding himself a cool spot in the shade. Wow, I can see his face, he's looking like right at us. Wow, in a matter of hours, we had seen another one of the big five. But I was still feeling a bit short-changed with him rolling off to sleep so quickly. Luckily for us, guys along the route told us of another sighting and we headed down a dirt trail again, bouncing around in the van for quite a distance. When suddenly... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, little back, little back. Right there, just off the road, was a lion and his lioness. Once again, lazily sitting in the tall grass. This time, we got our fill. So we had seen Mufasa the lion, Zazu the hornbill and Pumba the warthog. And sadly, our very own little Lion King episode was coming to an end. What could be better, I thought, than this day? But next morning I realised that's not a question you ask in South Africa. There is always something better around the corner. The day's itinerary had 450 kilometres to cover, which meant an early start from Hazy View. And Johan, our guide, was spot on about the stunning panoramic route. We meandered through banana plantations and pine line roads in the single cherry tree that stood out from the crowd, showing us its pink hues. This is a road that you will not only enjoy for the scenery, but for the drive too, with its nice twisty winding sections. We headed to the furthest viewing point on this route called Three Randa Wells first. It is named so because in the gorge of the Blyde River beside a flat top mountain stand three large rock formations. So we've just come on a stunning, stunning drive from Hazy View through Grasscorp and now here to uh, what is one of the viewing points on the panoramic tour. This is where the three rondavels, or what they say is that flat mountain top, which is the big chief, and the three circular ones there, those are his three wives. Well, it's absolutely fabulous here. We are here on high ground, which is called high felt, and lying below us, you see what is called low felt, and the view is absolutely spectacular. Folklore apart, the reason this place is so special is that you get a spectacular view of the low felt or the low lying ground surrounding the lake on one side and the gorge on the other. From this point on, we headed back down the road, parts of which ran along the gorge and small towns along the way painted pretty pictures. Soon we came up on a sign that said bottles. Now we did have some sudden potholes on this route and I was glad for the earlier warning signs especially since you can average around 100 kilometers an hour and when they come up suddenly they're quite lethal. However, this was different. It was a big green road sign pointing us towards them. Well, in normal circumstances we would have gone in the opposite direction but in South Africa these are something to be seen. The Blyde River or the Happy River gets really happy at this point, swirling around the rocks and dropping down in waterfalls, making some very large holes through the rocks, thus the name. Small bridges run across this area, taking you crisscrossing over the river and ending up atop the waterfall. Monkeys line the rocks and peer interestingly at the creatures in their habitat. This area is famous for its calcium deposits and a great spot for a picnic. After a while, we were headed back, driving through high grass and hills and dales, where we stopped at the last viewpoint, God's Window, given the name for its spectacular view of the entire valley. Unfortunately, some bushfires marred that spot for us and all we got was brown haze. But we did have some fun with the locals selling goodies who were all happy to pose with the sea class. The sea had just made our journey so comfortable and effortless, we didn't realise it was well past two in the afternoon. And we drove back to Grasscorp for lunch. 
Harry's Pancakes is a speciality hall and crowded with busloads of tourists stopping here for the uber yum and savory and sweet pancakes. Tummies full, we headed to Long Tom Pass, which houses the Long Tom Cannon. This was the last spot that this cannon was used, and in its heyday, it was a mean machine, shooting as far as 15 kilometers. We had done 1600 kilometers in four days, and it hadn't even felt like it. The South African roads and the C class had made it a breeze. But before calling it a night, Johan took us for an authentic local dinner at Moyo in the Santon area of Johannesburg. And boy, were we in for a treat. We chomped on some delicious slow cooked kudu steak, but the highlight was really a dish where the main ingredient was mupani worms. Yes, you heard that right. This fried caterpillar dish is a delicacy amongst the locals and I jumped at the opportunity to taste something new. I wasn't disappointed at all. The taste was leafy and the texture crunchy. Well, as day has turned into night, it's time for us to end this first part of our journey. We're arriving in Johannesburg and we are going to hand over this car. But the fortunate part is that we have another part of this journey. But that's for another story. As we leave Johannesburg for our second leg, I'm thinking you can tick a bucket list of items at a rapid pace in South Africa. From all the exciting adventure sports to the unique coastline to the unspoiled wilderness, South Africa seems to have something for everyone. And let's not leave out the quintessential reason to have an awesome road trip in South Africa. The brilliant roads it has to offer. Well, if you've enjoyed watching this, stay tuned for our next leg of the South African adventure coming soon.